my dear students this is dr madhuri goswami associate professor of english government girls college chumo in this lesson i am going to give you a brief introduction of parts of speech in english language although it's a basic english grammar topic but i have noticed a lack of practice among my students when they are asked to describe or to give a definition of noun pronoun verb adverb etc they can easily give the mugged up definition but when they are asked to identify parts of speech in a sentence most of them are not able to do that because understanding parts of speech is essential for determining the correct definition and function of a word even using the dictionary or using it in their daily life so this topic becomes very important so let's get started now let's see what is a part of speech it is actually a category to which a word is assigned on the basis of its function in a sentence in english language it also indicates how the word functions in meaning as well as grammatically within the sentence an individual word can function as more than one part of speech when used in different contexts there are eight parts of speech in english language noun pronoun verb adjective adverb preposition conjunction and interjection because the verbs are probably the most important word in the english language and there are two reasons what does a verb do a verb is a word that shows some action or state state means a situation for example in the sentence dylan plays tennis 3 times a week in this sentence the verb is plays because that's the action when we say plays we use s or es with the first form of the verb with he she or it so dylan plays tennis 3 times a week in the next sentence i am a teacher Can you tell me which is the verb in this sentence I am a teacher Yes the word am is the verb here and and that's basically the verb be we say I am you are they are she is etc so I am a teacher I want you to notice the difference between these two sentences Dylan plays tennis 3 times a week In the first sentence we are talking about a physical activity a physical action so the person is doing the thing physically but in the second person we are not talking about any physical activity but talking about a state so this is a state being a teacher is a state so verbs can show actions or they can show some state those are two types of verbs now let's take noun actually it's a name of a person place animal thing feeling or idea or in other words we can say noun is a word that represents a person place thing or feeling or any idea let's take a sentence as an example and try to find out how many nouns are there in this sentence the sentence is i'm speaking quite slowly at slow pace so that you can note it down rosy went to europe on vacation with her family last year i'm repeating this rosy went to europe on vacation with her family last year now in this sentence how many nouns are there what are nouns that i have explained already so we can identify what are nouns in this sentence yes rosy rosy is a name of a person okay then europe europe is a name of a place and the next noun is vacation vacation is the name given to a trip next noun is family 
what's family family is the group of people uh, in which there are mother father daughters brothers sisters so this is the name given to a certain kind of group and the next noun is in the sentence is ear ear is a period of time now let me quickly brief you about the types of noun uh, there are five types of noun basically proper noun that is example of this proper noun is india britain or the name of any person like madhuri common noun the example of common nouns are men table chair pillow light etc the third type of noun is collective noun and its example is swarm of bees bouquet of flowers and the fourth type of noun is material noun you can say gold iron silver etc and the fifth type of noun is abstract noun and its example is honesty so these are some important types of noun which we have seen you can note them down so i'm repeating them again one proper noun second common noun third collective noun fourth material noun and fifth is abstract noun now let's move further towards the next part of speech and that is pronoun the word itself gives us the meaning of this particular part of speech and that is pro noun pro means for noun i think you know noun is the name of a person place thing or any idea so here pro means for so a word which is used in place of noun which replaces the noun that is known as pronoun well let's see how many types of pronoun are there in english language uh, there are five types of pronoun number one personal pronoun in personal pronoun there are uh, basically three kinds of categories subjective objective and possessive and the second type of pronoun is reflexive pronoun third emphatic pronoun fourth demonstrative pronoun and fifth indefinite pronoun when we talk about personal pronoun we categorize them in three categories subjective objective and possessive so the example of subjective pronouns are i we you they he she it which we use as the subjects of a sentence and the objective pronouns pronouns which are used in place of object in a sentence and the examples are me us you them him her and it and when we talk about possessive pronouns their examples are my our your their his her its mine ours yours theirs his and hers and in the third category like this is possessive and the next one is reflexive pronoun and you can say myself ourselves yourself themselves himself and herself so emphatic pronoun is a third one and in this we can say he himself told me about it because the emphatic words cannot be used as subjects so we call them emphatic pronoun and there is a rule also if the reflexive pronoun in a sentence is replaced by reciprocal pronoun each other the meaning of the sentence changes drastically for example uv and karthik blamed themselves for the loss uv and karthik blamed each other for the loss so you can see the difference between these two sentences because the meaning is totally changed and it is reversed drastically and when we talk about demonstrative pronoun these are this that these those and when we talk about indefinite pronoun we can say these are the examples of indefinite pronoun something someone anything anyone somebody anybody one all few many nobody none some everybody everyone everything nothing for example we can say in a sentence we can uh, see the use of one of them that is some are born great 
and there's a rule regarding this when most of the above mentioned pronouns are followed by nouns they no longer remain pronouns but they become they become adjectives so like some boys were absent yesterday and the earlier sentence was some are born great so in this particular sentence some is used as pronoun but some boys were absent yesterday in this particular sentence this word some it has become adjective of boys so in brief we can say pronoun is a word that replaces a noun okay the next part of speech is adjective an adjective is a word that gives us information about a noun or pronoun now have a look at the sentence or you can note it down for your convenience they drive an amazing big red sports car well can you identify in this sentence the adjectives i'm repeating the sentence they drive an amazing big red sports car yes amazing big red sports these are the words which are adjectives in this sentence these are the adjectives because these words are giving us the information about the car like uh, there are some questions which are being answered here by these words what is your opinion of the car that's amazing what size is the car big what color is the car red what type of car is it sports so in brief we can say adjectives are qualifying words in other words we can say words or phrases that express something about or quality of nouns or pronouns are called adjectives they modify or describe nouns now let me tell you about kind of adjectives so in a way we can say number one adjectives of quality adjectives of quantity adjectives of number then we can say demonstrative adjectives distributive adjectives and interrogative adjectives so these are six kind of adjectives broadly accepted now let's have some examples and in those examples try to find out adjectives okay i'll give you the sentence the very old man had a frightened look the very old man had a frightened look in this sentence we find the examples of adjectives of quality like very old these are two words which are describing man another example of adjective in this particular sentence is frightened the word frightened is an adjective because it describes the look when we talk about adjectives of quantity we can say we don't have much time so this much is here describing the quantity enough little any whole these are some more examples of adjectives of quantity adjectives of number or numeral adjectives like 50 students most people love sweets a few more several these are some of the examples which we can cite for adjectives of number or numeral adjectives when we talk about definite numerals we can say one two three four five six seven eight etc these are cardinals and ordinals are another example of definite numerals they are first second third fourth fifth etc and they are used with countable nouns second type of numerals are indefinite numerals which are used with uncountable nouns the examples are many few all some any several etc the next type of adjective is demonstrative adjectives demonstrative adjectives point out which person or thing is referred to like this room these grapes those pictures such questions another type of adjective is distributive adjectives we can say for example each every either neither these are the examples 
of distributive adjectives. Now, the last one is interrogative adjective. So, to cite an example for interrogative adjectives, I would like to say, what sort of a man is he? So, here in this sentence, this word what is an interrogative adjective. So, remember that adjectives give us information about nouns and pronouns and they answer questions like what kind, what color, what type, what size, etc. Now, let's proceed further and just see what are adverbs that is the next part of speech that is the fifth part of speech in this lesson we are talking about in our schools we learned while studying english grammar that adjectives are those words which give information about a noun and adverbs are those words which give us information about verb in fact a lot of teachers teach that yes this is correct, but this is half correct because they are something more about the adverb. Adverbs are those words which give us information about verb true, but they can also give information about some adjectives and some other adverbs. These are really talented words which can be used in English language. And adverbs answer questions like when, why, how, where etc so let's take up some example and then we will understand what are adverbs yesterday evening we walked somewhat slowly in a very beautiful garden in this sentence the first adverb is yesterday evening that is defining or that is giving us information about walked that is a verb another adverb in this sentence is slowly how did we walk we walked slowly so yesterday evening and slowly these words tell us about what and that is a verb so these words are adverbs the slowly word it tells us how the action happened so this tells us the manner how now just pay the attention towards the word somewhat I am repeating the sentence. Yesterday evening, we walked somewhat slowly in a very beautiful garden. So this word somewhat, it gives us information about slowly. So this is an adverb which gives us information about another adverb. So somewhat is an adverb which gives us information about another adverb that is slowly in the same sentence we have one more word which we can say that is an adverb on the basis of its function it plays in this sentence very the word very is also an adverb because it describes an adjective that is beautiful garden is a noun here the word garden is a noun and beautiful word is an adjective describing this noun and very, very word is an adverb which describes another adjective that is beautiful in this sentence. So I'm repeating the sentence. Yesterday evening we walked somewhat slowly in a very beautiful garden. So now I think you must have understood all the things which an adverb can do. The next part of speech is preposition about which we are going to talk. Prepositions are words like in, on, by, from, before, after and with. Let me just define prepositions. Prepositions are the words which show relationships in time, place and position. Let's take up an example. I'll see you at the office on Monday. Can you identify prepositions in this sentence? Yes, there are two prepositions in this sentence. The first preposition is at. It shows us the place at the office. And the second preposition is on, which shows us the time, when, on Monday. So, that's what prepositions do. They help us to show the relationship in time, place and position. Now, students sometimes get confused with uh, preposition and conjunction. But these two are very different things. Conjunctions are words like and, but, or, so, 
because and they are here to connect ideas or things or persons for example there's a sentence ram and sham are best friends in the sentence the word and is a conjunction it helps us to connect ram and sham and these words are nouns but conjunctions can even connect sentences for example i didn't go to school today because i don't feel really well so here in this sentence we have two clauses clause 1 is i didn't go to school today and clause 2 is i don't feel really well so this word because is a conjunction and it's connecting these two clauses making it a one complete sentence or in other words we can say i don't feel very well is the reason and i didn't go to school today is the result so conjunction word because is connecting the result and reason in the sentence so the last part of speech we will look at is interjection Interjections are words that have no real meaning, but they help us to express sudden emotions and exclamations. For example, the word interjection, wow. This word show surprise, amazement, or uh, we can say excitement. So, there are some kinds of expressions which are expressed only through interjection words, like Oh, that it expresses the frustration and anger and uh, apart from these there are several other interjection words also like hurrah we won the match so it expresses the happiness ouch it expresses the pain oops i missed it it expresses the regret the feeling of regret in the same way, we have some other interjection words like hey, hi. These are interjection words which are used when we meet someone or to draw the attention of a person. Hey, I'm here. Hey, my all dear students, did you enjoy listening this lesson about parts of speech? Could you understand it clearly? Now, in the end of the lesson, let's quickly recap all the parts of speech. We started with the verb. Verb is a word that shows us some action or state. The second part of speech is noun. It is the name of a person, place, animal, thing, feeling or idea. The third part of speech is pronoun and it replaces a noun. The fourth part of speech is an adjective. It gives us information about a noun or a pronoun. The fifth part of speech is adverb. Adverb gives us information about a verb or an adjective or another adverb. The sixth part of speech is preposition, which helps us to show the relationships in time, place and position. The same part of speech is conjunction and it is used to connect ideas which might be nouns, pronoun and sentences. The eighth part of speech and that is the last one is interjection. Interjections Interjections are words that have no real meaning, but they help us to express sudden emotions and exclamations. So these are eight parts of speech which we have studied in this lesson. I hope through this lesson you must have learned what are parts of speech, how many parts of speech are there, and how to identify and use these parts of speech in sentences. Thank you for watching this. Happy learning!